Herndon and Franklin for the Class A state title here today in Charleston. The double A game is in the books. Greenbrier West wins it 74-70 over Williamson. Tonight, Woodrow Wilson will play Fairmont Senior for the triple A state title. At the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum, it's time for the Diet Mountain Dew starting lineups. Do Diet Dew. Now let's go across the floor and join Civic Center public address announcer Frank Blake. For the Class A championship game, let's welcome the Franklin Panthers. Let's welcome the Herndon Indians. Let's meet Franklin's head coach, Greg Smith, and Herndon's head coach, Jesse R. Lester, Jr. For Franklin, assistant coach, Rick Lineberg. For Herndon, assistant coach Donald Jewell. The support staff for Franklin, Cindy Evick, Shauna Murphy, Amy Hartman, Emily Fyroar, Brian Probst, and Eric Smith. Support staff for Herndon, Patty Scott, Eric McKinney, J.R. Brim, and Estel Harrison. The Lions Club host for Franklin is Dale Battles, and the Lions Club host for Herndon is Art Crimmins. And now introducing the squads. For Franklin, wearing number 14, Jason Kimball. For Herndon, number 30, Andy Austin. For the Panthers, number 20, Jamie Watson. For the Indians, number 24, Jason Perkins. From Franklin, number 24, Shannon Pitsenbarger. From Herndon, number 12, Ronnie Coombs. For the Panthers, number 34 is David Marsh. For the Indians, number 22 is Todd Sizemore. From Franklin, number 44, Matt Flesher. From Herndon, number 32, Larry Dunn. Also from Franklin, number 40, J.D. Hevner. And number 22, James Mooney. And now the starting fives. For Franklin, a 6'2 senior, number 12, Brian Calhoun. For Herndon, a 5'11 senior, number 34, Joe Questenberry. For the Panthers, a 6'2 senior, number 30, Jasper Hartman. For the Indians, a 5'11 senior, number 14, Kenny Green. From Franklin, 6'2 senior, number 32, Brian Mitchell. From Herndon, 6'4", a junior, number 42, Matt Graham. For the Panthers, 6'2", senior, number 10, David Thompson. For the Indians, a 6'0", senior, number 10, Bobby Griffith. And for Franklin, 6'3", a senior, number 42, Jeff Davis. For Herndon, 6'1", senior, number 44, Shannon Hurst. It's game time to tip off in one minute after we hear this message from Morgantown Physical Therapy Associates. Some of the athletes in this year's high school tournament are on the court because state-of-the-art sports medicine care has kept them in action. The Sports Medicine Institute in Morgantown provides care for these young athletes as well as active people who need professional care. To all the young men we're following today, best of luck from the people at Morgantown Orthopedic Associates and Morgantown Physical Therapy Associates. Call 599-2515. The College of West Virginia, formerly Beckley College, is poised on the cutting edge of higher education with two and four year degree programs designed to get you into a market driven economy. The College of West Virginia wants students who want a solid education to last a lifetime. For information on the School of Business and Technology, School of Nursing, Health and Human Services, or the School of Aviation, call 800-766-6067. That's 800-766-6067. Now accepting applications for summer and fall. The College of West Virginia, degrees ahead of the rest. This copyrighted broadcast is made under exclusive rights granted to the Metro News Radio Network by the West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission. Any rebroadcast, publication, or use of the accounts or description of this game without the express written consent of the Metro News Radio Network is prohibited. Once again, from the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum, here's Kyle Wiggs. The teams are making their way towards the center jump circle. We're just about set for the Class A state championship game. The officials today, Larry Jordan and Ray Jordan, they're set to go. 
Graham and Davis in the center circle. Herndon will go from our left to our right in this first half. And the ball is in the air. The tip controlled by Calhoun of Franklin. He gives it to David Thompson. Here we go. We're five seconds deep into the championship game of class single A. Thompson will shoot a three. It's good. David Thompson, head of the key with an exclamation point to start the Class A championship game. Greg Smith noticed yesterday against Peterstown that the press bothered Herndon. He immediately starts in the full court pressure. Graham misses on the baseline and gets his own rebound, gets the stick back basket. It's 3-2. Franklin in the lead. Into the front court, Davis dribbling near the hash. Now he goes into the corner to Thompson who thinks about another three. Back to Davis, he'll shoot the three. Too hard. Rebound down to Big Shannon Hurst. Hurst outlets to Quisenberry into the front court, switching hands on the dribble in the corner to Griffith. Griffith to Graham, posting up, shot blocked by Davis. The ball loose on the floor and picked up by Mitchell of Franklin. Brian Mitchell scoops it ahead to David Thompson. Thompson over to Mitchell, right side. Now back to Thompson. Pulls up from 15, his shot rattles around, one fall, big rebound Jasper Hartman, his follow-up attempt is no good, and the rebound to Hurst. Quickly, ahead to Green, Green shoots from 16, a little bit too hard, no good, the rebound pulled down by Graham, and a foul on the play, it will go on Hartman, his first, the first foul of the game. Jesse Lester is very concerned about the rebounding ability of Jeff Davis inside for Franklin, but he feels like that with Graham, Griffith, and also the very consistent Shannon Hurst this tournament, that inside he has the edge over Franklin. Herndon, the designated home team for this championship game, wearing their white uniforms with maroon and gray trim. Here's Graham at the line. He can give his team the lead for the first time today if he gets both free throws. He hits the first. We're tied at three. Graham on the second. It's short. Graham has all three of the Indians' points. It's 3-3, six and a half to play first quarter. Thompson bringing it up with the left hand. Pulls up his dribble, fires it off to Calhoun, who shoots a three. It's good. But Brian Calhoun, 4-4 four of four from the three-point line in this tournament. He was 2-2 two of two in game number one, one for one yesterday, and he doesn't miss a beat today. Long pass to Graham. He pulls up and scores from eight. They broke the press by throwing it over the defense. Graham hit the short jumper, and it's 6-5. Franklin in the lead. Calhoun, again, thinks about the three. Skip pass, right side to Thompson. Fakes left, goes right on the baseline, misses the shot, tipped around. Thompson gets it back. Back up strong in an offensive foul. Thompson called for the charge. That's the first team foul on Franklin. Kyle, I believe one reason that Franklin's pressure full court has not bothered Herndon the way that Peterstown's pressure did yesterday was that Herndon had to throw it over 6'8 Travis Jackson in backcourt yesterday. Today, not that big a problem facing the Indians. Kenny Green trapped right as he crosses center court. He bounces it off to Quisenberry. Quisenberry pulls up from 14, tries to dump it off to Griffith, and the pass is stolen by Calhoun. Calhoun gets it quickly to David Thompson, dribbling up the far sideline. Now here's Calhoun, tees up a three again, and it rolls around, doesn't fall. Offensive rebound by Mitchell, and they've got a foul, foul called on Griffith, battling Mitchell for that rebound. Mitchell has been a very consistent inside player this entire tournament for Franklin. She has had some tall jobs, contending with the likes of Trinity Crank on Wednesday, and also Josh Caldwell of CK last night. Here's Thompson. Bouncing it to Calhoun, who dribbles back out front. Now he dribbles towards the Herndon bench on the far side. A touch pass intended for Hartman inside was deflected out of bounds by Griffith. So Franklin will set it in along the baseline. Two hour left. They bounce it in to Calhoun. He goes up, misses the shot, gets his own rebound. Follow up is good. Calhoun with five, and it's 8 5 Franklin. Herndon again, 
breaks the press. A long pass, picked off. Cross-court pass, intercepted by Hartman. He pulls up from eight, misses the shot. Rebound tipped around. Davis gets it. He has it stripped and stolen. A great defensive job by Graham to take it away. Second Franklin turnover, and Quisenberry back the other way. Nearly loses it on the sidelines. He was falling out of bounds, threw it up, and it was tipped out of bounds by Hartman. Hartman and Green battling for it on the far sideline. Franklin struggling once they get into the set offense. Franklin's defensive pressure this entire tournament is what has made them be in the finals. We will talk more on that in a moment. Griffith bounces it in on the inbounds play to Hurst, who goes up against Davis and draws the foul, the first foul on Davis. What about this defensive pressure of Franklin this state tournament? Birch shot 40% from the field in the second half against Franklin in that loss. Cerrito Canova in the second half last night shot 34% from the field against Franklin. The defensive pressure this year by the Panthers has led them to this title game. Here is Hurst at the line. He misses the first free throw. Hurst with 30 points in two games in this tournament. He hits the second. And it's eight to six. The lead is two for Franklin and a near steal as Thompson had it deflected away. We've got a foul. Raymond Jordan, the official along with his brother Larry, uh, Raymond Jordan was honored during our double-A championship today at halftime by the SSAC for his years of fine officiating in the state. That last foul on Bobby Griffith, it's his second. We'll keep an eye on that. Here's Thompson pulling up free throw line, extended left side, fakes the shot, gives it off to Davis. Fires one up on the right baseline, it's no good, and the rebound to Griffith. Quisenberry brings it up on Thompson. Off to Green, a long three-pointer, good! Kenny Green nails a 25-foot three-pointer. He can shoot it from there, no doubt. He's close to 50% on the year from the three-point distance, but man, that was a bomb. It's nine to eight. The lead is one for Herndon, and now Thompson scores for Franklin to put his Panthers back in the lead, 10-9. One thing about Kenny Green this entire tournament, he has been explosive with his shooting, but he has never been consistent. A turnover on Herndon. Griffith travels near the lane. Exclusive Metro News coverage of the 1992 state tournament is being brought to you in part by the College of West Virginia. The College of West Virginia, formerly Beckley College, is poised on the cutting edge of higher education with two and four year degree programs designed to get you into a market driven economy. The College of West Virginia wants students who want a solid education to last a lifetime. For information on the School of Business and Technology, School of Nursing, Health and Human Services, or the School of Aviation, call 800 766 6067. That's 800 766 6067. Now accepting applications for summer and fall, the College of West Virginia, degrees ahead of the rest. Ride with me, ride with me. For an outstanding all-terrain vehicle, visit Bridgman Honda, RG Honda, or Mid-State Marina and take a close-up look at the Honda Four Trax 300. It's sturdy, dependable, hardworking, and great for recreation, too. That's why the Four Trax 300 is Honda's most popular ATV. Honda recommends the Four Trax 300 riders be 16 and complete a training course. Come ride with us today. Take a look at the Honda Four Trax 300 at Bridgman Honda, New Martinsville, RG Honda of Clarksburg, or Mid-State Marina Sutton. 3.37 to play first quarter. The lead is one for the Herndon Indians at 10 to 9. We were talking about Kenny Green before the break. He has been in double figures, 16 on uh, Wednesday, 14 yesterday. But Green has never been consistent in his shooting to where he's gone on a streak of hitting three or four in a row. That's one thing, obviously, Herndon would like to see happen today. Okay, Franklin with the ball. Davis brings it up, hands it to Thompson. Thompson resets the half-court offense off to Davis beyond the three-point arc. Now in the right corner, Thompson shoots it from two. No good. Tip back up and in by Jeff Davis. His first two of the game. And it's a 12-9 Franklin lead. Green picks up his dribble. Now he gets it underneath to Graham. A pass deflected up and hits the rim, and it comes down to Franklin. Turnover on Herndon. It's their fourth. Davis in the left corner. Dribbles once, gets himself inside the three-point arc, misses the shot, the rebound controlled by Hurst. Hurst to Quisenberry, into the front court. Quisenberry penetrates, kicks it off to Griffith, his three-point attempt nowhere near the basket. And this time Hartman controls the rebound. Hartman 
Gets it to Thompson. Thompson, a nice bounce pass down the lane, and the layup is up and good by Mitchell. The difference between the full court pressure applied by these two teams, once Herndon gets it in the front court, they've not been able to take care of it. Once Franklin gets the ball past midcourt against the pressure defense, they have been able to convert on most occasions. 14 to nine, the lead for Franklin. Three-pointer Griffith, a little bit too hard. The rebound down to Calhoun. Calhoun again gets it to Thompson, who brings it up on that far sideline. Thompson stutter steps on the dribble. Off to Calhoun. He fakes a three, gives it to Thompson. He'll shoot the three. It's good. David Thompson from the right corner. Well, one thing that Thompson's outside shooting is going to do is draw Herndon's zone out a little bit more. And when that happens, Davis inside can post up. Quisenberry. Off to Green, back to Quisenberry, 40 feet from the goal. Right side Griffith, the bounce pass into a posting up Graham. His shot is short. The rebound knocked out of bounds by Thompson. Herndon will keep it. Franklin has been able to limit Herndon to one shot offense in most cases as well. Our stats show so far Herndon with just one offensive rebound. Griffith gets it into Quisenberry. Three-pointer good. Right off the inbounds play, Joe Quisenberry hits it. 17-12 the score. Franklin in the lead. Thompson deftly dribbles out of a trap at midcourt. Off to Davis, three-pointer. A little bit long, the rebound on the opposite end of the rim to Hurst. Hurst to Quisenberry, who wants to push it. Quisenberry back out front to Hurst. Hurst fakes right, goes left, off to Quisenberry. Three-pointer on the way, good! Joe Quisenberry has hit two three-pointers in a row. And it's 17-15. It's cut the Franklin lead down to two with one minute to play first quarter. Davis off to Mitchell. Back to Davis at the hash. Head of the key, Calhoun. They swing it right side to Thompson. Thompson back to Calhoun. Here's Thompson right wing. He'll shoot a three. This one off the front of the rim. No good. Tipped up by Davis. And he does a great job, or at least he tried to save it in off of Quisenberry. And they say that Davis touched it last before it went out of bounds. Quisenberry has been very inconsistent with his shooting, but very timely, as we saw just a moment ago. And what about the pass against the press yesterday by Peterstown? Broke the press with three and a half minutes to go, hit Graham for the layup. That put Peterstown 57 points, or rather Herndon 57 points on the board, and that was the deciding factor. Charging foul on Shannon Hurst as he bowled his way down the lane. He charged into Calhoun. The personal foul is Hurst's first, and it goes back to Franklin. Third team foul on the Indians. 25 seconds to go. Franklin with a two-point lead and the ball. Jamie Watson into the game. The senior sixth man handling the ball at the point. 15 seconds left now. Watson. Off to Thompson, right wing. Back to Watson, doesn't want the three. Takes a couple of dribbles, pulls up at the free throw line. Off to Calhoun for the two-pointer, and that one's good. 19-15. Half-court shot at the buzzer by Green, no good. That's the end of the first period with the score. Franklin 19, Herndon 15. While in Charleston, visit Murad's at 35th Street in Kanawha City with nine television screens at your place to watch the NCAA tournament. Our timeout continues with a local break. This is the Metro News Radio Network.
19-15 the score. Franklin leading Herndon and the Indians with the ball to start quarter number two. Quisenberry setting up against Thompson. Left side to Green. His lob pass intended for Hurst was stolen away. Watson back the other way. Turnover number six on Herndon. Thompson fakes a pass inside, has it knocked away, but he recovers 25 feet from the goal. He flips it back out to Watson, who resets things. Watson penetrates, kicks it to Calhoun. Three-pointer, good! Brian Calhoun with 10 points. 22-15, that's the Franklin lead. Hurst, in the middle of the press, breaks it, brings it into the front court, giving it off to Griffith. Now back out to Quisenberry at the point. They've got Graham posting up at the free throw line on Davis. Here's Griffith again. And a foul as Calhoun was hand checking him as he dribbled towards the baseline. Defensively, you have to like what Franklin is doing. You notice at the Franklin offensive end of the court, they are able to penetrate and kick back out to the open man. Anytime Herndon has the ball on offense, seemingly they have to work a little bit harder to get in sync and get the points. They get it into Graham, who's Turnaround jumper is no good, but he drew the foul. Graham will go to the line. That foul on Davis, it's his second. Graham so far in this tournament, 35 points, 23 rebounds coming into today's contest. He's got five points, so give him 40 points in three games so far. He misses the first free throw. And what's so impressive about Graham's overall total is that in the Clay Battelle game on Wednesday, he sat out most of the first half and a portion of the third quarter in foul difficulty. And he had 22 in that game. He misses the second shot, the rebound down to Thompson. Thompson to Watson in the corner. Back out front to Mitchell. Mitchell's 14-footer, good. Straight away from the basket, Mitchell hits the jumper. 25-15 the score, 6.45 to go until halftime. Here's Griffith to Quisenberry. Between the two circles. Now left wing. Green has it, dribbling with the left hand. Back to Griffith. Griffith dribbles once, picks it up, goes right wing to Quisenberry. Quisenberry steps up and shoots the three. It's no good as he's knocked to the floor. The rebound to Thompson. Thompson bounces it off to Watson. Back to Thompson. Drives in the paint, running one-hander. Rolls over the front of the rim. There is just a confidence coming from David Thompson's floor game today that you can sense any time he touches the ball. Thompson with 10 now, it's 26-15, six minutes to go. Hurst again has it knocked away and stolen, stolen by Calhoun. Thompson deflected it, and Calhoun was able to pick it away. Thompson involved in every facet of this game. Calhoun off to Jamie Watson, who shoots a three. It's short, tipped up once, and the next time tipped out of bounds. Hartman had a couple of cracks at the ball as it was coming off the rim and a timeout on the floor Herndon calls the timeout with a break in the action let's take a moment to hear from Gomar go for good times go for Gomar why is Gomart becoming one of America's favorite convenience stores? Hi, I'm Marty Machine, and we're taking calls. Go ahead, caller. Why is Gomart becoming one of America's favorite convenience stores? Well, sir, I, I like the jelly donuts. Ah, the jelly donuts, yeah. And a fried chicken, and a big old bag of potato chips, and the cookies, and gotta have my cookies, you know. Uh, you know, uh, sir, you sound remarkably like... Ah, uh, 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 and a hot dogs. I even wrote a song about the hot dogs. You ain't nothing but a hot dog. Uh, sir, excuse me for asking, but are you by any chance... Uh, hungry? Well, sir, yes, I am. And I, I think i got to get some of them Gomart jelly donuts right now. Hello? Uh, uh, sir? Who was that guy? Go for good time. Go for Gomart. 26-15 the score. Franklin leading Herndon. 5.50 to go, second quarter, as the teams retake the floor after the Herndon timeout. One thing Franklin has been able to do in their zone is to deny the passing lanes and the driving lanes as well. Green has not been able to go to the basket at all today, and neither is Bobby Griffith. Quisenberry looks for and finds Hurst on the inbounds play. He gives it to Quisenberry, who brings it up on Thompson. Quisenberry to Griffith. Left side, guarded by Calhoun. 
He hands to Green, who'll drive baseline and draw the foul. Well, even that time, Green able to drive the baseline, but not a lot there. Fortunately for Herndon, he was able to draw the foul, but for the Indians to be effective with their offense, Green needs to be able to take the ball to the basket. The foul on Watson, his first. Here's Griffith in trouble looking for someone to send it into. He finds Hurst. Hurst has it stripped away and stolen. Mitchell knocked the ball out of his hands, and Hartman came up with it. And now a near turnover on the near sideline as Thompson recovers. He flips it back out to Calhoun, who gives it to Watson to reset things. Here's Calhoun right wing. In the corner, Hartman. Now Watson has it head of the key. He tries to bounce it inside to Mitchell, but it was kicked. So Franklin will set it inbounds onto the goal. Kyle, the entire tournament, we have talked about Jeff Davis' inside play on defense. But very quietly, Brian Mitchell has been most effective getting the rebound, keeping things alive, and doing an outstanding job in the middle for Franklin. They send it in to Watson, who fires it left side to Calhoun. He misses a three. Big rebound, Thompson. He bounces it into Mitchell, fakes up once, and then goes up and scores. Mitchell with six. It's 28-15. Franklin in the lead. Five minutes to play here until halftime. Quisenberry trapped right over the midcourt line. He gets it to Hurst to a wide open Graham underneath. He turns and scores. One of the few times today that Herndon has been able to come down against the Franklin pressure and make things click that well. Here's Watson dribbling a couple of times to get it over the midcourt line after the pressure. Now he does a 360 with the dribble to shake Quisenberry. Right wing they go to Thompson. Thompson is fouled. That foul on Green. It's his first. Team's fourth. Franklin under their goal, ready to set it in. Calhoun bounces it into Thompson, who has it deflected out of his hands by Green out of bounds. So we go with the inbounds play. They move it over about 15 feet to the left, and now Calhoun in the corner looking for someone to get it into. He finds Mitchell out front to Thompson, and he's fouled by Quisenberry. Quisenberry's first, and the team's fifth. Quisenberry ultimately fouled out yesterday against Peterstown. We've talked about it the entire tournament. His father, the point guard on that 67 Herndon State Tournament team, Quisenberry and Terry McKinney, the leading guns in 67 for the state tournament Herndon Indians. Franklin works it around the perimeter. Calhoun misses a three from deep in the left corner. Quisenberry running after the rebound. Picks up his dribble, forces up a shot from 12. It's no good, and the rebound to Calhoun. Kyle even noticed that time. For a moment, it appeared that Herndon had the numbers, but how quickly Franklin got back and shut off any attempt to go to the basket. Watson working on Quisenberry. Draws the foul. Oh, an offensive foul and an illegal screen set by Brian Mitchell. So we'll go the other way. That foul on Mitchell, his first. And the team's seventh. That puts us into the bonus situation for Herndon. Kenny Green, who has taken only two shots today. He nailed that bomb three-pointer early in the game, missed a follow-up three-pointer, and after that, Green has not taken a shot. Here's Green shooting from the line. He bends at the knees, fires the first one. It's good. That pulls Herndon two within 10. 3.54 to go here, second quarter. Green again relaxing at the line. The shot up is good. Green with five on that three-pointer and two free throws. And it's 28-19. Franklin with the lead and the ball. Long inbounds pass to Thompson. Thompson fakes a shot from 17, bounces it back out front to Watson. Watson picks up his dribble, finds Mitchell underneath, fakes one shot, then goes up and shoots. Shot was no good. The rebound controlled by Hartman. He had it knocked out of his hands out of bounds, so Franklin will retain possession. What experience and discipline shown by David Thompson. He wanted that three-pointer. He thought about it a couple of times before he gave it up. 
I think there are very few players who could resist the temptation in this kind of environment not to try to fire that up. Now a steal by Herndon on the inbounds play. Quisenberry tries to push, but Franklin gets it back again. Here's a three-pointer green. It's good. Kenny Green, two of three from beyond three-point distance. Those are the only shots he's taken. 28-22 is the Franklin lead now after that Green three-pointer. Thompson dribbles behind his back to get away from Green, pulls up from 16. Shot no good, but tipped back up and in by Jasper Hartman. The lead back up to eight points for Franklin. Three minutes to go here. Second quarter, Quisenberry. Lobs it to Green. Now right back to Quisenberry. Right side Griffith thinks about a three. Dribbles inside. Puts it up with the right hand. Off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound Calhoun. Calhoun outlets to Thompson. Up the far sidelines. Thompson. Bouncing in the corner for Davis who traveled with it. With Franklin's offense. Just when you think you have somebody like Thompson and Davis in check. Here comes one of those role players to break your back. We've seen Mitchell do it this tournament. What about Calhoun? And then a moment ago, Hartman, he's been pretty silent offensively this game until that big tip in. 30-22. Herndon trailing with the ball. Another long three-pointer. Green, he hits it. That is the first time this entire tournament that Green has hit two in a row from the outside. And it's a five-point lead for Franklin. The Herndon cheering section back into this one. Watson, off to Hartman, left side, passes up the shot, back out front to Calhoun, right side, Thompson, three-pointer on the way, and he nails it. David Thompson with 13. 33-25 the score, Franklin in the lead. Quisenberry trapped at mid he threw it away, threw it right to Calhoun, and Calhoun hands it to Mitchell. Mitchell ahead to Thompson. Thompson between his legs, now he picks it up, lobs it in the corner to Hartman. They get it to Mitchell sliding down the lane, and he drew the foul. Bobby Griffith leaving the game a moment ago being replaced, and Griffith had that outstanding opening game against Clay Battelle, and seemingly after that, any time he has had the ball, he has tried to find that same groove immediately, and in doing so has taken some bad shots. Case in point, just a moment ago, and right after he took that fourth shot of the double team, Lester took him out. Shannon Pitsenbarger into the Franklin lineup, the 5'10 junior. He's seen action in all three games for Franklin. At the line is Mitchell. He hits the first shot. That makes it an 11-point game. Mitchell again hits the shot. He gets them both, and it's 35-25. Franklin in the lead. Quisenberry bouncing it off to Green. Green loses the dribble, now recovers, goes between his legs. He's working on Pitsenbarger. They set a screen for him to drive baseline, and he drew the foul. Kenny Green has to have the ball on his hands with Herndon trailing at any point in the game. Off the drive, he can make so many things happen. And I would assume that if Green is continually able to take the ball to the basket, you will see Graham start breaking to the hoop and Green picking him up with the quick pass. Here is Green at the line. He has the 11 points, 41 points so far in the tournament for the senior. He hits the first free throw. Substitution, Griffith back in. He replaces Shannon Hurst who leaves with 133 to go in the half. Lester had a nice talk with Griffith on the bench. It will be interesting to see when Griffith gets the ball on offense next time, how selective he will be with his shooting. Green hits them both. Now they blow it dead as the net gets caught. David Thompson takes care of that and gets a hand from the Franklin cheering section. Now we're ready to go. Calhoun to trigger, but first another substitution. Watson back in, Pitsenbarger has a seat. Calhoun gets it into Thompson. Thompson working on Green, picks it up, flings it cross court to Watson. Watson into the front court. Off to Calhoun. Calhoun bounces right wing to Thompson, skip pass to Watson. Watson back at the point, dribbling with the right hand, picks it up, right side Thompson, pulls up from 17, his shot is up and in. 
David Thompson says, just clear out, make some room, and I'll shoot it. Foul trouble against Birch. Limited Thompson's playing time. He had 11 on Wednesday, but 23 in the game last night against CK. Under a minute to go and a steal. Mitchell played the passing lane, stepped in there, picked off the pass, and Franklin back the other way with a 10-point lead. Thompson has tripped, but he got it off to Mitchell in time before the traveling violation was called. Now a pass in the corner to Watson. Watson underneath to Hartman. He turns and shoots over Graham. This is the shot, but the rebound down to Mitchell, and he scores. I think the story in the first half offensively for Franklin, not so much Davis and Thompson, although Thompson has been sensational, but the guys like Watson and Hartman and Mitchell, who at very opportune times come up with a big play. Quisenberry hands to Green. 12 seconds to go. Green is tripped, and he threw it away. Not his fault. He was knocked from behind. He got his feet caught up with one of the Franklin players, fell to the floor, and tried to bounce it off into the corner, and it went out of bounds. Eight seconds left to go. Here's Thompson bringing it up with five seconds. Thompson still on the dribble. Shoots from 16 and scores. David Thompson unstoppable in this half, and that's how it ends. Thompson has 17. His Franklin Panthers have a 41 to 27 halftime lead. It's halftime at the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum. The score once again, Franklin 41, Herndon 27. This is the Metro News Radio Network.
so far. Here we go. Franklin will get the ball to start quarter number three. Calhoun gets it in to that man, David Thompson. Thompson working on Quisenberry. To Davis in the left corner. Davis takes one dribble, skips it back out front to Calhoun. Lob pass to Davis. It does not connect, and it's grabbed by Graham for Herndon. Graham to Quisenberry. Off to Griffith, driving in, laying it up, and in. Very interesting beginning. The thing that Bobby Griffith just did is what propelled Herndon to those two wins. Drive the baseline. Now an offensive foul on David Thompson. They had him trapped. Hurst and Griffith had him trapped, and he charged right into Hurst. Second foul for Thompson. It seems to be Thompson's exciting play in the second half that the two previous games have ignited the Herndon fans and the rally. 41-29, three-pointer on the way. Quisenberry, good, here they come. Quisenberry with his third three-pointer of the game. He has nine, it's 41-32. Again, full court pressure applied. This time, Davis gets it ahead to Hartman, back to Davis. Davis will shoot a three. It's in the air, rattles around, and rattles back in. Davis answers with a three for Franklin, pushing the Panthers' lead back up to 44-32. Here's a three by Green. It's good. Green. Kenny Green with 16. Breaking to the goal. Thompson, a great defensive play by Green to knock it away, but he stepped on the end line as he tried to save it. Now, here's what happened on that play. Green slapped the ball. And the ball stayed inbounds, but Green stepped out of bounds. Now, somebody else has to touch that ball before you can again once you leave play and come back in. 44-35 to score. Franklin in the lead. Calhoun thinks about a three. Comes back out front to Watson. They get it to Hartman, who shoots it up. It's no good. The rebound pulled down by Graham. Herndon. Back on offense. Quisenberry up the far sidelines. Picks up his dribble. He bounces it off to Hurst. Hurst turns and draws the foul. And suddenly, as well as Herndon getting back in the game, they have brought the crowd into the game as well. And Greg Smith of Franklin said, hey, I know everybody, but our cheering section today is pulling for Herndon. If I weren't playing Herndon, I would be pulling for Herndon with this human interest saga behind them. That foul on Hartman, it's his third. And here is Hurst at the line. A two-shot opportunity for the 6'1 senior. The lefty puts up the first shot and rolls around the left side of the rim and falls off no good. Jesse Lester up off the bench, calling out some encouragement to his team. Second shot, no good. He missed it left again, and this time the rebound to Mitchell. I don't know what Coach Lester said to this team in the locker room at halftime, but it worked because they've come out fired up like we've never seen them in this tournament. They've got a lot of work to do to get back into this when they trail 44-35 with 6-10 to go. Franklin with the lead and the ball. Davis in the corner to Thompson. He drives baseline, hasn't blocked, but he's fouled. Well, certainly uh, Franklin showing good signs of patience on offense. It would be very easy to get caught up in a shootout at this point as Herndon is fighting their way back in and getting the crowd excited. But what does Franklin do offensively? They go back to their strength. David Thompson, they put the ball in his hands, and Thompson patiently works, ultimately draws the foul. That foul on Hurst, it's his second. Hurst takes his position along the blocks, waiting for Thompson's free throw. Two-shot opportunity. The first one is good. David Thompson's first point of the second half. He's a 19 points per game scorer. He already has 18 points today. Second one. No good. Rebound Hurst. Hurst rips it down. Outlets to Quisenberry. Quisenberry brings it up himself. Off to Griffith. Now inside. Posting up was Hurst. He missed the shot. Ran down his own rebound in the corner. Goes up again. No good. And a foul on a Griffith. Coming over the back of Mitchell going after that rebound. It's Griffith's third. Hurst a very frustrating day. Inside, I mean, he has had some challenges this tournament, including putting the body on Travis Jackson yesterday. He's been very effective inside, but is struggling here in the third quarter, both at the line and from the field. 5.40 to go here, third quarter. Ten-point lead for Franklin. The Panthers have the ball. Davis. 
25 feet from the goal, holds it high, it's off of his head. Now Thompson right wing, back to Davis, takes one dribble, goes up with the shot, banks it up. It's no good as it hits the rim and kicks off. Davis gets his own rebound and charges. He charged right into Shannon Hurst. That's foul number three on Davis. Yeah, he gets the charging foul, but you've got to love the way that Davis plays. He attacks any time he has the ball. Goes after the offensive rebounds and then goes up strong, and this time he got whistled for the personal. Turned it again, can cut into this 10-point Franklin lead. Quisenberry bounces it off for Green, who has it tipped away, but he recovers. Green dribbles between his legs, pulls up near the near side hash. Now off to Griffith. Griffith right down the lane. He puts it up, no good. Blocking foul. Blocking foul on Mitchell of Franklin. That's his second you know, and the fourth team for Franklin. You know, Kyle, people have been talking about, well, this is the first trip for Herndon since 1967 and all the times that Franklin has been here the past six years. Franklin first went to the state tournament in 1979 in Morgantown. They lost to Guyon Valley. That's when single and double A was a field of four. Remember Bob Humphreys leading Franklin into the state tournament in 79 and that was the same year, the same day that Morgantown St. Francis pulled that big upset over Earl Jones and the Mount Hope Mustangs. Griffith hits the first free throw. He has three for the game. Second one on the way, and no good. Big offensive rebound, Quisenberry. His follow-up, no good. Rebound tied up, and they call a foul on Hurst. That will be his third. Hurst battling Thompson for that rebound. 45-36 the score. Franklin in the lead. Calhoun with Hurst in his face, ready to send it in. He finds Watson right back to Calhoun. Calhoun ahead to Thompson. Thompson has it deflected away from behind, but he recovers on the dribble. A great no-look pass to Hartman, who gets a layup. Give an assist to Thompson on the no-look pass through the lane, and it's 47-36, 4.40 to go. Griffith, left baseline, shot is short. He gets his own rebound, goes up and draws the foul. Well, Griffith that time reacted wisely, al wisely along the baseline. In the first half, we would have seen him go ahead and take that shot with the man in his face. Instead, the fake, the baseline drive, rushed it and left it a little bit short, but instead of being frustrated, wisely followed his shot to the basket and picked up the offensive board. Four fouls on Hartman now. He leaves the game. He's on the bench right next to Jeff Davis, who has three fouls. Hitzenbarger in to replace Hartman. Griffith at the line. He hits the first. So starters Thompson, Calhoun, and Mitchell in the game for Franklin along with Watson and Pitsenbarger off the bench. Herndon has its starters in the game. Griffith gets the second free throw. It's 47-38. 4.35 to go. And Watson is trapped and fouled by Griffith. That's his fourth personal. Griffith will have to leave now. Herndon uh, put a new wrinkle in the press with Thompson bringing the ball up the floor. The Indians could do nothing with him. That time, Herndon forced the ball into the hands of Watson. Had him doubled up pretty well, but fortunately for Franklin, Watson was able to break and draw the foul. Griffith has a seat next to Coach Lester on the bench. He's replaced by Todd Sizemore. Here comes Thompson, eh? He lets the defense fly by and brings it up. Guarded by Quisenberry, flips it off to Watson, who directs some traffic. Watson near the left hash. His bounce pass stolen away by Quisenberry, but he stepped on the sideline, so it will go back to Franklin. Calhoun slaps the ball, gets it into Watson. Watson to Pitsenbarger, right side Calhoun. Calhoun skips it to Watson. 20 feet from the goal. Shovel pass inside. Going up strong and scoring is Mitchell. 49-38. Four minutes to go third quarter. Here's Quisenberry. Off right side to Sizemore who fires one up. It's no good. Rebound batted around. Controlled by Quisenberry. Underneath the Hurst. His baseline move. 
is no good. He's called for the offensive foul. Boy, excellent position inside by Brian Mitchell. He has been so timely with his actions today. That's Hurst's fourth foul. So Griffith and, Her and uh, Hurst both on the bench with four. Exclusive Metro News coverage of the 1992 state tournament is being brought to you in part by the West Virginia Veterinary Medical Association. The common mosquito. To you, it's a nuisance, but to your dog, it's a deadly threat. Mosquitoes can be carriers of heartworm disease, a potentially fatal disease that has now spread to almost every state in America. So ask your veterinarian how you can protect your dog from heartworm disease. Your dog's life could depend on it. This important message was brought to you by the West Virginia Veterinary Medical Association. The College of West Virginia, formerly Beckley College, is poised on the cutting edge of higher education. With two-year and four-year degree programs designed for a market-driven economy, the College of West Virginia is looking for students who want a solid education. For a free music videotape which tells about the College of West Virginia, send $3.50 shipping and handling to CWV Video, Box AG, Beckley, West Virginia. That's CWV Video, Box AG, Beckley, West Virginia. Now accepting applications for summer and fall. The College of West Virginia, degrees ahead of the rest. 3.50 to go, third quarter. Herndon trailing Franklin 49-38. Both teams in a little bit of foul trouble now. Hurst and Griffith each with four for Herndon. Hartman has four for Franklin. Davis has three. All those players out of the game right now. Long lead pass to Watson. Watson breaks to the goal and has it knocked away from behind by Quisenberry and out of bounds. It'll belong to Franklin. Unfortunately for Herndon, down by 11 points in the second half, you have to put on the full court pressure. But with backward people like Thompson and Watson, then of course Davis is more than capable of breaking the press as well when he is in the game. Very tough to pressure Franklin effectively. Calhoun gets it into Mitchell, now to Watson. Three-pointer on the way, Calhoun. It's no good, and Mitchell was knocked to the floor. The foul will go on Herndon Mitchell not the shooter instead the man who set the screen for the shooter and so that is why it is not a two shot situation merely an inbounds play the foul on Dunn Calhoun slaps it bounces it into Mitchell wide open layup good Brian Mitchell with 14 now 49 and 51 to 38 the score 335 to go green 25 feet from the goal gets it to Quisenberry he fires a three and hits it Quisenberry's fourth three-pointer today. He has 12 points, and it's back down to 10. Franklin with Thompson zigzagging on the dribble. All the way, he lays it up and in. David Thompson with 20. Just took it coast to coast. Very calmly and coolly right down the lane. Finger roll was good. Here is Dunn from the free throw line, just inside the line, canning his first shot attempt. 10-point game again. Three minutes to go, third quarter. Mitchell's trapped. He fi finds Watson. Watson brings it up. Off to Thompson. Thompson again. Penetrating, pulling up. He has it swatted away by Green, but it goes right to Mitchell. Now to Calhoun. He bounces it to Watson. Watson top of the key. Off to Pitsenbarger. Inside to Mitchell. He forced the pass, and it was knocked away and stolen. Here comes Green. Green with Sizemore with him. Pulls up from eight and hits. Kenny Green with 18, 53-45, Calhoun into Dunn, Dunn is trapped, dribbles once, dribbles twice, gets it off to Calhoun, Calhoun to Watson who breaks the pressure, Calhoun into the front court. Watson with it, head of the key, off to Pitsenbarger, Pitsenbarger to Calhoun, he lines up a three, it's no good, the rebound, down to Dunn. Dunn to Quisenberry, long lead pass to Green, and Watson runs it down in the corner. It went off of Green's fingertips, and Watson came up with it. Back Franklin the other way. 53-45, Franklin in the lead with 1.45 to go. Greg Smith says, calm things down, boys. Notice Herndon has gone to the box and won. Four people playing a zone, and in the meantime, Quisenberry out to try to cut down on David Thompson. Now, the best way for Franklin to combat this is take it inside. And, of course, once you put Davis back in the lineup, then you've really got an inside weapon to go to. They call a foul on Quisenberry as he was face guarding Thompson. Thompson didn't have the ball. Quisenberry was all over him. That's Quisenberry's second. 
One and one opportunity coming up for David Thompson, who has 20 points today. Quisenberry with some fouls to give. He'll no doubt use them up, chasing David Thompson all over the floor. Thompson hits the first. Thompson with 58 points so far in three games in this state tournament. Second shot good. Thompson with 22 today. 10-point lead, Franklin. Quisenberry off to green. They lob it, and it's, top, it's tipped away. The pass intended for Graham. It was knocked out of bounds by Franklin. Sizemore to trigger now under his goal. He slaps it. Gets it out front to Green. Green guarded closely by Watson. Takes him to the lane and draws the foul. Now Green realized he had a size mismatch with Watson on him of about two to three inches. And his quickness as well, the better in that instance. And he put it on the floor and went inside and able to draw the foul. Watson's second, the sixth team foul on Franklin. Sizemore again. This time he finds Quisenberry. Quisenberry working on Pitsenbarger. Skip pass to Sizemore. Sizemore hands off to Green. He's working on Watson again. Works around a screen. Has it tipped away from behind, but he recovers. Off to Quisenberry. One minute to go, third quarter. Quisenberry, waist high, left hand dribble. Tipped away and stolen by Watson. He tips it ahead to himself, and now it's stolen back by Sizemore. Herndon back the other way with 50 seconds to go. Quisenberry again will set things up. Off to Sizemore, right in front of the Herndon bench. Here's Green working on Watson. He forces up the shot and drew the foul. Anytime Green has been able to get the ball facing the basket, he has always taken Watson to the basket. You know what is so fascinating about this Franklin team that we have seen from year to year? Yeah, they're listed as guards and centers, but they are so interchangeable. Right now, David Thompson, the point guard of Franklin, and this man-to-man -man defense is guarding the 6'4 center of Herndon and hanging with him in the body-pushing contest inside. Now Greg Smith goes to his bench. He brings in Jason Kimball, a sophomore. He's a 5'9 player. Watson goes out with three fouls. Here's Green at the line. First shot, rattles around and does not fall. Rebound to Thompson. 35 seconds to go. We haven't seen much of Jeff Davis here late in the quarter. Davis will most certainly check back in as quarter number four starts. Franklin to hold for one shot. 20 seconds to go. Kimball, head of the key. Off to Pitsenbarger. Now Kimball has it back. Sizemore comes out to pick him up. Kimball to Pitsenbarger. Now they look for Thompson. Thompson gets it with seven seconds to go. Fires it up from 16. No good. Batted around. Pitsenbarger comes down with it. He misses a short shot in the paint, and it goes out of bounds off Franklin. 2.2 seconds left. Herndon with one last opportunity. Dunn looks to fire it. He gets it to Sizemore. Off to Quisenberry. Half-court shot at the buzzer. Too long. That's the end of the third period with the score. Franklin 55, Herndon 45. Accommodations for the 1992 state tournament crew are being provided by the Charleston Marriott for business or leisure. Marriott service is the ultimate luxury in Charleston. Our timeout continues with a local break. This is the Metro News Radio Network.
It's a 10-point game as we head to quarter number four. Franklin leading Herndon 55-45. Herndon with some defensive adjustments, trying to slow down Thompson and Calhoun in this half. It's pretty much worked. 27 points, those two combined four in the first half, only five in the third quarter. Green misses a three, the rebound down to Franklin. Jesse Lester has pulled out the stops. Griffith and Hurst both with four personal fouls start off the final period in the game. Watson back in for Franklin, so is Davis. They swing it to Calhoun. Calhoun out front to Watson. Watson still with it, bouncing it to Davis. Takes one dribble, then picks it up. Here's Davis again, ahead of the key, Watson. Right side, Calhoun. In the corner, Mitchell. Back to Calhoun on the wing, to Watson between the two circles, guarded by Griffin. Davis to Watson, right side again. Calhoun underneath, they find Davis, layup good. Skip pass diagonally across the lane. Davis was wide open. He gets two more, and it's 57-45. Franklin in the lead. One minute gone here in this fourth quarter. Green off to Graham. Turnaround jumper, too hard. Rebound knocked loose, and it will belong to Franklin. Kyle, what was so impressive about that last Franklin possession? Two or three Panthers touched the ball and had open shots. But in this situation, they like Davis or Thompson to get their hands on the ball. They were disciplined enough not to take the open shots. Instead, wait for their money men to make it happen. Bounce pass out of bounds. Thompson tried to bounce it to Mitchell, who we expected to cut for the goal. He didn't cut for the goal. It was bounced about five feet ahead of him and out of bounds. 57-45, Quisenberry off to Green. Green to Griffith, fakes the three, goes to Shannon Hurst underneath the Graham, his shot up and good. Matt Graham with nine today. Ten-point game again. Calhoun working on Hurst. He gets it ahead to Mitchell. Mitchell back to Calhoun across the timeline. Now he bounces it off to Watson. Kyle, so far Herndon has stayed in the exclusive zoner box this entire second half. In a moment, they're going to have to start coming down and picking up a man to force the action. Watson, left side Davis in the corner, Mitchell. Into Thompson, who's posting up. His shot up and good. David Thompson with 24. 59-47, 5.45 to go. Quisenberry bounces it off to Griffith. Three on the way. Off the front of the rim, no good. A rebound, Graham, and a foul. They've got Mitchell for his third. Graham very silent in the second and third quarters here in the fourth. Franklin realizing that they've got to be able to pick up points quickly. Going inside, and Graham has responded. Graham, a junior, talking to Gene Reed, the coach at Mullins last night. Certainly he would be excited to have a player of this caliber coming into Mullins High School next year if that merger happens in Wyoming County. And, of course, if the merger does happen, Mullins, the single-day power for so many years, elevates to a double-A school. Graham gets the first free throw. That puts him in double figures for the day. Second shot, short. Rebound to Davis. Graham with 45 points in three games in this tournament. Thompson bringing it up on Quisenberry, and he's fouled by Quisenberry. That's Joe's third foul. He tripped up Thompson just as David crossed center court. Fifty-nine, forty-eight. the score. Franklin in the lead with Thompson at the line. First shot is good. Thompson money from the line, and we've got a timeout on the court. Time for another ice-cold diet Mountain Dew with that full tilt taste. Dew, diet Dew. You can ski a live volcano. You can stop a charge and ride on. Outrageous full tilt taste, you won't believe it's a diet. You can jog the hop a hobby, catch piranha as a hobby, but you've never done nothing like a diet do. You can leap, you can fly, take a ride in the sky, but you've never done nothing like a diet do. Yeah, you've never 
I've done nothing like a diet do. Do diet do with 100% Nutrisweet. 12 point Franklin lead with 532 to go here in the Class A state championship game. Fourth quarter shooting Herndon one of four from the field. Franklin perfect two of two. They've worked their offense to perfection, gotten the high percentage shots that they won, and they've hit those shots. Disciplined offense the entire time Franklin has been in this tournament. And they are disciplined in the fact that when things get tight, they know who to go to to get the job done. Total unselfish offensive effort the entire three games by Franklin. Thompson at the line. He's got one shot left. This is his bonus shot. He hit the first one before the break. It's up and no good. 25 points for David Thompson today. 60-48 the score. Herndon with the ball. Quisenberry, left side, picks up his dribble. Now hands off to Green. Green driving baseline, dumps it off. Up and in by Graham. Graham got the pass, immediately went up and scored. Ten-point game again. That's where it's been for the entire second half. That swing between 8 and 12 points. Here's the man-to-man -man pickup that we referred to a moment ago. Franklin just standing at midcourt. Still, Herndon is in a zone. Now they're starting to pick up man. Calhoun. Right side, a pass to Watson. It nearly didn't get there. Watson grabbed it. Now back to Calhoun. Here's Davis between the circles. Off to Watson. Watson dribbling with it, guarded by Griffith. Watson now picks it up off to Davis. Davis back to Watson. Four and a half to play. Still a 10-point Franklin lead. Watson trapped by Griffith and Green. He gets it off to Calhoun. A lob inside to Thompson. It's stolen away by Herndon. And now Thompson nearly steals it back, but he ended up out of bounds. Graham and Hurst combining to come up with that steal. Timeout on the floor. This Metro News Sports exclusive is being sponsored in part by Glenville State College in the heart of West Virginia. In the heart of West Virginia, we're Glenville State College. We provide the knowledge, understanding, and skills you need. Our main campus in Glenville and the Nicholas County Center, Summersville, provide programs in the arts and sciences, as well as forest technology, nursing, petroleum engineering technology, teacher education, and many, many more. Glenville State College, main campus Glenville, and the Nicholas County Center, Summersville, in the heart of West Virginia. 60-50, a 10-point lead for Franklin Herndon. We'll have the ball after the steal. Kyle, you feel like this is the final run, the final run that Herndon will have at Franklin. They've been trading baskets with them the entire second half after knocking that 14-point halftime lead down to 10. Well, here in the fourth quarter, it's still a 10-point game. This is where Herndon has to make the run. They've got the ball now. Watch him come down the floor, either look for Graham in the middle or Hurst, or rather Kenny Green, shoot the outside bomb. Herndon with two timeouts remaining for the stretch run. Greg Smith has three to utilize as Franklin's coach. Franklin making its sixth straight trip to the state title. This is the first time the Panthers have ever been in the championship game. Going for Greg Smith's first state title in his 10th year as coach. Jesse Lester has been at the helm at Herndon for five years. It would also be his first state title. Green shot up no good. The rebound pulled down by Hurst and he's fouled. Lester up off the bench to holler out some instructions. That foul on Davis, that's his four. Shannon Hurst has been very inconsistent at the free throw line today. This is a point where you've got to step up and make those. You've got the advantage of the clock being stopped. Missing front ends of one and one just will not cut it at this point. Hurst one of four from the line. He, that's where he scored his only point today. The lefty puts the shot up, it's no good, and the rebound nearly stolen away, but Franklin will maintain possession of the ball. Calhoun looking into full court pressure defense. He gives it to Thompson, who draws the foul. Thompson bowled over Green. Blocking foul called on Kenny Green. It's his second. And you feel like that Herndon had the golden opportunity there. And did not take advantage of it. Green got his shot off, missed it. 
Good rebounding effort by Hurst, but when you are given the opportunity to score, with the clock stopped and a come from behind effort, you have got to capitalize on that. One on one and one situation for Thompson. He's been great from the line today. 4.07 to go. Here's the first one. It's no good. I jinxed him. The rebound down to Griffith. Griffith to Quisenberry. You know, isn't it interesting the teams that have won tight games in single leg in this tournament have not made their free throws in the fourth quarter? Well, Griffith just hits a three. Three-pointer by Bobby Griffith to cut the lead and down to seven. 3.45 to go. Thompson up on Quisenberry. Pulls up at the hash. Gives it off to Calhoun. Now left side, Watson. Watson picked up immediately by Sizemore. Watson bounces it off in the corner to Hartman. Now back to Watson, and he's fouled by Sizemore. That's his first. I think that's a pretty good move on the part of Herndon. Franklin not hitting their free throws either here in the fourth quarter. You look at Franklin and those free throws that Davis missed in the final period against Birch. Yesterday, Herndon, those free throws they missed in the final period against Peterstown. Teams that have won uncharacteristically have done so in tight games by not connecting on big free throws. Watson gets his first free throw to roll around and fall. Watson's first point today, the 5'10 senior contributing offensively here. He can get a second. It's up and good. Watson with two. 62-53, Franklin in the lead. Griffith in the lane, short shot, no good. He gets his own rebound, left side of the rim, and he puts it back up and in. Griffith with nine. 62-55, 3.20 to go. Full court press applied. Franklin bounces it in, and a foul immediately. Dunn is hacked, and now Larry Dunn will go to the line. Well, Herndon cannot be content to let Franklin get the ball past midcourt and then play keep away. Basic game plan of Herndon is steal the inbounds pass. If you can't knock away the ensuing first pass, then you got to foul. Herndon, or rather Franklin, can be very effective working the clock. With that very versatile offensive ball handling core in there. Larry Dunn, first shot, good. Here's Dunn, a junior off the bench, coming in and calmly sinking his free throw opportunity. Here's the second. This one is good as well. Five points for Dunn off the bench. 64-55, 3-10 to play. Griffith thinks about a three, then he comes back out to Green. He'll shoot the three top of the key and a foul. He'll get three free throw opportunities as he was knocked to the floor after shooting that three-pointer. A think, foul, on, foul on Calhoun. I think Watson and Calhoun kind of got confused as to who was supposed to have the head of the key. And now they're calling it a one and one situation. That's not a popular call at all. Jesse Lester says this is not a time to argue. Step up and make the free throws. You've got to admire the way Lester is keeping his head and staying positive, trying to tell his team to do the same thing. Here is Green at the line. Bends at the knees and hits the first. Kenny Green with 19 today. His team trailing in the waning moments of this contest. 3.06 to go. Green again. Shoots it, and it rolls off the side of the rim. No good. 64-56. Franklin in the lead. Exactly three minutes to play. Thompson brings it up on Quisenberry. Gets around Quisenberry at midcourt. Thompson still on the dribble in the corner to Calhoun. Calhoun picked up by Green, and he's fouled from behind by Green. That's his fourth. One thing about Franklin here in the final three minutes of this game is Herndon has been trying to make the run. Any time that Herndon has sent Franklin to the challenge of making the free throws, those role players, not the big guns Davis and Thompson, but the role players have stepped up there for Franklin and nailed them. Davis isn't even in the game right now. He's on the bench resting. He's set to check back in, in fact, at the scores table. The first shot is up and good. Hey, it's five in a row, right? Five free throws in a row and a two-minute stretch. Davis will check back in for... Calhoun 
if Brian hits the second free throw. It is up and it is good. The buzzer sounds and Davis comes in for Calhoun who sits down with 12 points. 2.50 to play, a 10 point lead once again for Franklin. Quisenberry for Herndon. He gives it up to Griffith. Long three-pointer, Green. It's off the back of the rim, no good. Run down by Griffith. Griffith hands to Quisenberry. Right in front of the Herndon bench, Quisenberry. Off to Green. Green drives down the baseline, kicks it back to Hurst. Hurst shot blocked by Thompson, but they've got a foul. They'll call it on Mitchell. He got him with the body. That's four on Mitchell. And a timeout called by Herndon coach Jesse Lester. You know, Kyle, Wyoming County has often been called one of those cradle of coaching pockets. And you start looking at Mullins High School, Louis D'Antoni, Don Stover, Don Knuckles. They all coached at Mullins. Willie Akers, who later won the four state championships at Logan, played at basketball at Mullins. Bob Stewart at Pineville, his team back in here again this year. I'm going to throw a name at you as well. Paul Greer, who coached Oceana High School to two single-A titles in 1963 and 65. He later coached triple-A basketball at Greenbrier East in the late 70s. Paul Greer got his coaching start in high school at Herndon High School back in the late 50s. 2.30 left to play, a 10-point lead for Franklin Herndon trailing here. Herndon playing in its first state tournament. This is the first Herndon basketball team ever to win 20 games in a season. The Indians are 21 and five. They've had great success over the last three years. 15 and eight last year, 16 and six two years ago. Only now as coach Jesse Lester and his team received the publicity. It is so well deserved for the stretch of great basketball it's played over the last three years. Lester in five years at Herndon 65 and 49 is the record. And he's got his team in the state title game. Here at the line is Hurst. His shot is up and good. Hurst with two. He's got 32 points and 11 rebounds in three games in this tournament. Second shot, no good. Rebound to Hartman. He has it knocked away from behind, but it's picked up by Davis in the lane. Davis dribbles out of trouble. He hands to Thompson. Thompson across the midcourt strike. 2.15 to play. 66-57. Watson is fouled by Dunn. Dunn's second. Jamie Watson to the line. Well, it's getting very, very close for the frustrations of Franklin to end six years in a row here and always coming away short, most of the time being eliminated by the eventual state champion any time they've been in the state tournament. Talked about Birch in 89 and last year. In 79, Diane Valley eliminated them. Watson at the line, hits the first free throw. Franklin was here in 1982. Dave Wilfong led the Panthers down here. Who beat him? The Mullins Rebels, the eventual single-day champions. Watson again connects on the second. He has four points, all from the line. 2.15 to play, 68-57. Herndon needs some threes. Here's Quisenberry shooting a long one. It's no good. Rebound fought for and batted out of bounds by Hurst. It'll go back to Franklin. Substitution for Herndon. Ronnie Coombs into the contest, a 5-5 sophomore. Dunn goes to the bench. Franklin gets it in to David Thompson. Two minutes exactly to play. They trap him. Now he gets it off to Dunn. And a foul as Watson handles the ball. Watson fouled by Quisenberry. Kyle against this pressure that Herndon has used the entire second half. Have you ever seen... Franklin crack once. I mean, they have just handled it like it's just part of out taking a Sunday stroll. They just never panic, never rush or throw a bad pass. Just very patient. I think the steadying influence of David Thompson out there, one of the big reasons why. Watson again connects at the line. He's done a great job stepping up to the line in these crucial late situations and hitting the free throws. Second one up and good. Watson with six in a substitution. Calhoun re-enters and replaces Hartman. 
Shannon Hurst will set it in with the length of the court to go. Hurst gives it to Quisenberry. 155 left to play, 70 to 57. Three-pointer fired up, it's no good. Coombs missed that one, the rebound down to Mitchell. Mitchell headmans it to Davis. Davis off to Calhoun, bank shot up and in. Calhoun with 14 today. 135 to go, 72-57. Green dribbles between his legs. Green now off to Coombs. Coombs will shoot a three. It's up and no good. Reflected out of bounds. Off the hands of Griffith. More substitutions. Here's Matt Graham coming in for Herndon, and the first thing he does is call the timeout. With a break in the action, let's hear another Metro News State Tournament golden moment with Hoppy Kirchival. The year was 1945. The site, the West Virginia Fieldhouse. One of the biggest upsets in state tournament history. The Normantown Vikings from Gilmer County would beat the odds to become the state champions, despite being the smallest school in the entire state. Just 20 seconds left in the game here at the WVU Fieldhouse. Normantown's Earl Gaynor with the ball dribbling outside. Normantown up by a point over Logan. Now 15 seconds to go. Gaynor continues to dribble, handles the ball beautifully. 10 seconds and the Normantown dream will become reality. The smallest school in our state is about to win the title game over undefeated Logan. Three seconds, two seconds, one. It's all over. Normantown has done it. The team from the town, less than 100 people, is the best basketball team in the Mountain State. The West Virginia State Championship, memories that last a lifetime. Herndon out of timeouts now. Franklin has three remaining. Possession arrow pointing in the direction of the Franklin Panthers. We've got 127 left, 72-57 the score. Franklin in the lead. They can feel that state championship coming on. Baseball pass to Davis. He takes it to the goal, lays it up and in before tumbling to the floor. Davis with nine, 74-57. Quisenberry to Griffith, back to Quisenberry. Wants to shoot a three, but he dribbles into the free throw line, throws up a wild one-handed shot at the line, no good. The rebound pulled down by Graham, he misses. Offensive rebound to Quisenberry, and he scores. You can see Franklin starting to lower their aggressiveness, not wanting to foul, very content to just trade buckets right now. Thompson pulls up at the free throw line, then kicks it back to Calhoun. Calhoun off to Mitchell, to Watson in the corner, back to Mitchell at the hash. Mitchell back out front to Calhoun, 44 seconds to go. Davis left corner, fires it to Calhoun. Calhoun backs away from the defense, gives it to Thompson, now Calhoun has it. 30 seconds to go and they start to celebrate in the student section. Thompson with it, dribbling with the right hand, goes between his legs, skip pass to Calhoun, back out front Davis. 20 seconds left, Franklin's going to win its first state title. Davis out near midcourt, 12 seconds to go. Off to Thompson, chest high dribble now. He gives it to Davis. A slew of substitutions waiting to check in, but they won't get to one second. Davis puts it up at the buzzer, and it does not fall, but it doesn't matter. Franklin wins, 74-59. Coach Greg Smith has his state title after 10 years at Franklin. Six trips in a row here to Charleston in the state tournament, and the frustration is over for Greg Smith. He and the Franklin Panthers win the state title. Well, a couple of thoughts come to mind. The first one being that I'm sure Jesse Lester, when he calls for the varsity to get their jerseys and uniforms washed over the weekend and turn them into school on Monday, I don't think they're going to listen to the coach. The final season of Herndon basketball, one that will be remembered forever, and I'm sure every player for that Herndon team, many of them in tears now, will hang on to those jerseys as a possession treasured forever. In the meantime, Franklin coming down here before with more talent. Jeremy Bodkin, Matt Seitz, who's now playing college basketball over at Bridgewater, Virginia in Division Three, But this year coming down with two outstanding players and individuals who knew their roles and never forgot what those roles were. Both teams will be honored, the champion Franklin Panthers and the runner-up 
Herndon Indians. They will be presented with individual plaques along with the big trophies that will become possession of the schools. And coming up later on, we'll have an interview with uh, Franklin head coach Greg Smith as soon as all the trophies and the awards are presented. The final, once again, Franklin 74, Herndon 59. We'll return to the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum in a moment to recap the game after we hear from Gomart. Why is Gomart becoming one of America's favorite convenience stores? Hi, I'm Marty Machine, and we're taking calls. Okay, go ahead, caller. Why is Gomart becoming one of America's... Because America at a Gomart in West Virginia, an 87-year-old woman gave birth to a two-headed alien. What? This is I.B. Slander of a national innuendo. The supermarket tabloid with all those outrageous stories? That's correct, Marty. And I'm here to report that at a Gomart in Ohio, Bigfoot was captured. Sir, that's ridiculous. That's exactly what Jackie O said when she helped subdue him. Sir, Gomart doesn't need untrue sensationalism. People go to Gomart because it's convenient. Right. And that's why next year, Madonna will be making a concert tour of all the Gomarts in the country. Sir, that's a blatant lie. Madonna is not going to do a Gomart concert tour. Oh, so you cut the deal with Michael Jackson instead, huh? What? Go for good times. Go for Gomart. The one thing you can always expect in life is the unexpected. And that can make saving a little tough sometimes. That's why One Valley Bank offers so many ways to help you save. Everything from savings to money market accounts, CDs, IRAs. After all, when it comes to us, the one thing you can always expect is an answer. One Valley Bank, the one bank for all of West Virginia. Member FDIC. Penalties for early withdrawals from some savings plans. Come ride with me, ride with me. For an outstanding all-terrain vehicle, visit Bridgman Honda, RG Honda, or Mid-State Marina and take a close-up look at the Honda 4 Trax 300. It's sturdy, dependable, hard-working, and great for recreation, too. That's why the 4 Trax 300 is Honda's most popular ATV. Honda recommends the 4 Trax 300 riders be 16 and complete a training course. Come ride with us today. Take a look at the Honda 4 Trax 300 at Bridgman Honda, New Martinsville, RG Honda of Clarksburg, or Mid-State Marina Sutton. The College of West Virginia, formerly Beckley College, is poised on the cutting edge of higher education with two- and four-year degree programs designed to get you into a market-driven economy. The College of West Virginia wants students who want a solid education to last a lifetime. For information on the School of Business and Technology, School of Nursing, Health and Human Services, or the School of Aviation, call 800-766-6067. That's 800-766-6067. Now accepting applications for summer and fall. The College of West Virginia, degrees ahead of the rest. The championship trophy is about to be presented here to the respective teams. Franklin, the champion in Class A. The runner-up is the Herndon Indians for 1992. They're currently announcing the all-tournament team, Speedy. Some of the awards already given out. The Sportsmanship Award, Herndon High School. The cheering section award goes to Payton City. Visually spotting some of the all-tournament team members, we see Kelly Mann of uh, Peterstown, Travis Jackson of Peterstown, uh, Jeff Davis, and, of course, David Thompson from Franklin, uh, Matt Graham, and Kenny Green from Herndon. David Thompson with 62 points in three games in this tournament. His teammate Jeff Davis, 28 points in the tournament. For Herndon, the players honored. They had two players on the all-tournament team. Kenny Green with 49 points in three games in the tournament. Matt Graham had 47 points and 23 rebounds coming into this contest. 47 points for the three games, 23 rebounds in the two games. Certainly several more today. And I believe also that was Kevin Hatfield and I believe Dee Bosley. Josh Caldwell of Cerrito Canova. Here is the entire team. Josh Caldwell of Cerrito Canova. Kelly Mann of Peterstown, Kevin Hatfield of Birch, the two Herndon players, Kenny Green and Matt Graham, two players from Franklin, Jeff Davis and David Thompson, and Travis Jackson of Peterstown. You know, Kyle, for the first time since 1987, the single-A state championship leaves Southern West Virginia. And for the first time in four years, the single-A state championship Leave single day region seven. Birch and Hearts had a corner on that ever since 1989 and the year before that, Bramwell from down in Mercer County as well. The last team above the Kanawha River to win the single day championship 
Payton City back in 1987. And now Franklin can claim the title over in the Eastern Panhandle. The Herndon players getting their individual plaques as they're honored as the state runner-up this year. Coach Jesse Lester had some words with his team. And of course, this team has accomplished more than any other in Herndon High School basketball history. And that's, I'm sure, the emphasis of Coach Lester's words. You guys are champions. You guys didn't finish second today. You're still champions in the community and in all the minds of basketball fans for this state tournament. And now Coach Lester giving his players individual hugs as they come back towards the bench with their individual plaques. It has certainly been a most interesting uh, single day field this week. Two teams that everybody thought would be here today. The Peterstown Pirates and the Birch Bulldogs eliminated suddenly Birch by this Franklin team and Herndon eliminated Peterstown as well. So even the fact that Herndon came up short on the scoreboard today. They can keep their heads high in the fact that, hey, we had to do it the hard way to at least get into this final. Kyle, you remember this Herndon team came from nine down in the second half against Clay, Clay Battelle on Wednesday to even get to the semifinal round against that Peterstown squad. The individual stats for this game, Franklin wins at 74 to 59, leading the way, David Thompson, he had 25 points today. He was 9 of 16 from the field, 4 of 7 from the line. Next up, Brian Mitchell, 6 of 7 from the field, 4 of 4 from the line. Brian Calhoun had 14 points, 4 of 9 from the field, including two three-pointers. He was 2 of 2 from the line. Jeff Davis with 9 points for Franklin. Jamie Watson had 6, and Jasper Hartman with 4. Those two players coming off the bench. For Herndon, Kenny Green led the way with 19 points. He was 5 of 10 from the field, 5 of 7 from the line. Joe Quisenberry with 14 points, 5 of 11 from the field. Matt Graham with 12 today, 5 of 10 from the field, 2 of 6 from the line. Bobby Griffith also in double figures, 3 of 10 from the field, 3 of 4 from the line. Shannon Hurst contributed 2 points. Larry Dunn, 2 points off the bench, 74-59 the final. Franklin wins the state title. We'll return to Charleston in a moment, and we'll talk with the victorious head coach, Greg Smith of Franklin. But first, a local break. This is the Metro News Radio Network.
Back live inside the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum. The Class A state title has just been won by Franklin High School. Franklin knocks off Herndon 74-59 in the championship game. Joining us now, Franklin head coach Greg Smith. Coach, congratulations. Thank you all. It's been a long time coming. I know you all realize that. But, uh, uh, it's pretty sweet. I didn't realize how sweet it would be, but it, uh, I guess the more you put it off, you know, we put it off several years, and we finally got it. We just feel real fortunate. I'm real happy for all the kids. Uh, uh, in, and these kids especially because they've worked so hard and even the kids before that fell short you know the teams before that we had I thought they were the stepping stones to get us up to this level uh, it's, it's just a good feeling has to be frustrating you come here five times previously in a row and you can't quite get there this time you went all the way well, we had some tough breaks the, the four or five years before that and uh, we felt one of these times that we're going to get some breaks go our way and uh, a lot of breaks went our way you know we knocked off a good birch team to start with and uh, and then we had that unfortunate situation there with CK with the Cooper kid, which, you know, we didn't, we didn't have anything to do with, obviously, but we didn't like it. It was unfortunate, but it's a break for us. And, um, you know, now I thought the kids played pretty well tonight. Greg, you came down here before with Joe.